Hi everyone, happy Friday, happy kickoff launch the weekend time. We are going to have a play with vellum and specifically cardstock vellum. Just real quick, I did put the ordering code for it in the description of this video. You can find it in the online store, uh, Janet Wakeland at stampinup.net. You can also find it in the Stampin' Up! annual catalog on page 126 that's down here in the corner. Vellum 8.5 by 11 cardstock, number is 101856. So let's set that away because I just have all kinds of things for you. We'll come back to the samples in just a second. In addition to the cardstock vellum that has a weight of about 43 pounds, Stampin' Up! has this 12 by 12 printed vellum and it's got a leaf pattern it's got dots and it's got stripes and everything that I show you that you can do with cardstock vellum you can do with this 12 by 12 vellum as well this will be found with the pages of the 12 by 12 specialty paper so beautiful paper you're going to see at least one sample with that but again the techniques that I I use on the cardstock vellum um, you can use on that vellum as well. So this is a nice cardstock weight. It's still not quite as heavy as traditional weight. And I just want to show you just for comparison so you can see kind of a little bit of the thinness of it. This is Coastal Cabana. It's a full pack of Coastal Cabana 24 sheets. This pack here is a full sheet of 20 sheets of vellum. So it is definitely stiffer, but I mean stiffer thinner but it's still got a stiffness to it. It's not flimsy. It's gonna hold some shapes. It's gonna do great for creating windows and things like that. So let's start off first by taking a look just at some finished samples. And then we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna work through the techniques that are on some of these cards um, so that you can see them. Uh, so we'll be demonstrating this technique here to make your vellum really pop. This is our paper florist dies. I'll be showing you how to add color with your blends and using them as die cut images is definitely a fun way to use them. Simply just using them as any other element that you would. It's just a much prettier, softer look. I absolutely love vellum. As you can see by my samples, I use it a lot because it's perfect for that extra softness, um, for drawing attention a little bit differently to the verse. If I had put this verse just direct on cardstock, it might be a little sharper. So it just depends the look you're going for, but I love it. Here again, using, I wanted um, the silhouette to pop, but I didn't want it to pop against a harsh vanilla or white. So cardstock vellum to the rescue, right? And so it's just making that pop. So again, vellum can actually help with that contrast. You saw this sample when we did the handcrafted elements video, and there's that stripe. And again, it's just a nice softer way of um, adding an element to your background, allowing the elements that are on the front of that um, card base to, to stand out a little bit more and not fight for attention. Same thing here, I wanted to do a tone on tone look. Um, but again, had I put white there, I would have lost the look of the patchwork pieces. And so the vellum is gonna break it up. I can still see the look of my patchwork pieces on this card. Here's another fun way. We've got dies and images that work as two steps. And so here we added a layer of vellum to give depth to our beautiful, cheerful daisies. The other fun way to use vellum is to create windows and little peekaboos. So here in this case, I have our snowflake embossing folder, our sweet new um, bear punch, and it's all just white on white with the greeting here's to a season full of wonder and cheer on the inside and you get a hint of that greeting through the window. I could press it down to see it, um, but again, using them for windows is fun. Another favorite way that I have of using them is to emboss them, and we'll be taking a look at some different embossed images. This is the new Distress Tile. I think that this Distress Tile, when it's embossed, looks like beautiful lace, and I'm, I'm extremely infatuated with this look. So for um, this one here, I wanted windows on my chairlift, ski lift, gondola, whichever phrase you want to call it. Um, I could have chosen to use acetate, but I chose to use um, a little bit of vellum. So I created just that little softness there 
um, so that my gondola had windows. Here's another look, another way to use it is with a technique called stained glass and coloring on it. And again, we're gonna be going through these different, some of these different techniques and I wanna show you some different things. And then here is another embossing folder that we colored on. I'm gonna keep these handy because we're gonna pull them out as references. So a couple of things that we'll talk about is we're gonna talk about some of the different techniques I just mentioned. And we're also gonna be looking at some of the different ways to adhere vellum. Actually, the, the two most common questions I get is, how do you adhere it and can you stamp on it? So let's start first with, can you stamp on it? And yes, you can. The difference between stamping on vellum and stamping on Stampin' Up's cardstock is it does take a bit for it to dry. When you first stamp on it, you're gonna see that it stays shiny. Once it's no longer shiny, it's dry. So this I stamped and set it aside. Now I can't tell you two minutes, three minutes, 10 minutes, 20 minutes. It's gonna depend on the temperature in your room. More importantly, a lot of times the humidity in the area where you're working and crafting may make it take longer to dry. If you're impatient or need it like now, you can take your Stampin' Up! heat tool. It has two settings. Put it on low and gently blow the heat over it and it can dry quicker. But yes, you can use regular ink on it, regular markers on it. Um, anything that you do to cardstock as far as blends, markers, embossing, all of that you can do and it will dry. It just may take a little longer to dry with our basic inks. And here's just another example using the blending pen. Now because this ink is not as dense as when I stamped it here with the image, you've got you know a lot more ink concentrated on the branches of the tree here. I'm kind of spreading that ink out. It will dry a little bit quicker like this. Now the vellum, um, appears to have two sides. I always just kind of look at it. One side's a little more matted and one side's a little shinier. Um, to the average person, you may not notice the difference. The more you use it stamping or playing with both sides, it may start to become apparent, but it's not always um, like a sure thing. You know what I mean? Like, oh, it's totally different or I stamped on the wrong side. That's just not going to happen for you. So let's take a look at a couple of ways to adhere the, the vellum and then we'll get into some of the different techniques. So one of the things that Stampin' Up! has is something called adhesive sheets. And this is a full sheet of adhesive. It's all sticky, the entire thing is. And it has a little release paper on it that you would just pull back. And so what I've done is I've cut this down so that it's just a little bit smaller than the piece of paper. I'll finish doing a whole lot of trimming later. And I'm going to go ahead and um, take that backing off. And I'm not gonna pull the entire backing off at once. Otherwise, you're just left with all this crazy sticky stuff. So I like to kind of pull it off a little ways and put it down and then start to just pull that backing off as I go. And then just go ahead and really give it a good rub. You can go ahead and um, use your bone folder just to make sure all of that adhesive is in there. And then you can go ahead and pull the other release paper off, the other backing off. And what you're going to have is no points of adhesive. So you won't have anything that um, is actually going to, to be seen through the vellum. So then we'll go ahead and do the same thing here. And we're just gonna go ahead and give it that really good rub in and then have that adhesive on there like that. So then another way to do this is to take, right here, I knew I had it out for you guys. Take your silicone pad, put some liquid glue out on it. I have two or three daubers designated for this. They're just kind of in their own little jar, usually close to my liquid glue. And I like doing it this way as opposed to with a paintbrush or something like that because if you don't get those bristles clean quick, quick enough, they'll get stiff. This actually stays tacky and doesn't really get hard like paintbrushes do for whatever reason. Just kind of another little crazy thing, I guess. And so here, you've got your cardstock or your paper, depending on what it is, you're just gonna take your adhesive and you're just gonna coat the entire piece of your vellum. So you're just gonna completely cover it. And then again, whatever size it is, I'm using a big size because it stands out here, um, but you're just gonna coat it and make sure that it's nice and smoothed out. 
And then when you go ahead to put it on that cardstock and give it a good rub and a good blending in, it may look a little wet for just a few seconds, but of course it needs to dry. And then when it's dry, you won't have any adhesive marks. So um, full adhesive sheet, painting it on with your dauber and liquid glue. Then a couple of other ways to use your um, vellum. Let me find an example here. So in this case here, the vellum, I put dimensionals on the, the, um, the, the horse that, and I put it on the vellum first. Then I flipped the vellum over. Let me see if I have a little vellum piece here to show you kind of what I'm talking about. So let's pretend like um, this greeting here. didn't cut an actual shape. So we're gonna take our, this is our stamped image. We're gonna put it on our vellum and I've got all my dimensionals and marks on that. Then when I flip it over, wherever there was a dimensional, I can put a dab of liquid glue, I can put a dimensional to match it up, or I can put a glue dot. So basically what we're doing is we're hiding where that is. I'm not worried about all the little extra edges because then I'm also gonna seal the edges as I did here with snowflakes or embellishments, just catch them a little bit. But I don't need the entire thing sealed down. I need to keep it from falling off of the paper, but I don't need to seal every corner. So I can try to hide that with glue dots or with dimensionals behind the stamped image that I'm laying on the front of it. So that's another way of doing it is to hide the sticky points if that makes sense. And then another way to, to adhere your project, I've got so many things here to show you, it's kind of all piled up and I tried to have a little system. So one of the techniques is to use it to create window cards. So another way to adhere it is by going ahead and um, hiding it, sandwiching it, creating a sandwich of layers, um, literally like by creating a window and sandwiching that adhesive then behind or that vellum between layers between sandwiches so just creating that little sandwich and then you're going to have it sandwiched between and you saw that technique i'm going to lay that on here for right now you saw that technique here where we sandwiched it between and then in the case of this card again we did the same thing we sandwiched it behind this designer paper and the cardstock you could also create another opening here and sandwich it so it's a true window card. You could easily do something like that as well. So again, just a real quick tip, using full adhesive sheets, if you're going to use a large piece to cover your entire card, using a dauber and liquid glue and painting the adhesive over, again, if you have a large piece that you want to adhere. My two most common ways of adhering it is to hide the adhesive, so you can see on this side, the edges aren't adhered. I don't feel like they need to be. They're not gonna catch anything. They lay nice and flat on their own. And the adhesive for the vellum is hidden behind the ornament. And um, again, like in this case here, the adhesive is hidden behind the flowers. That's my absolute go-to way of doing it. Again, edges are up a little bit, but it's heavy, it lays flat. All the adhesive is hidden behind the embellishments. And then the last way is to sandwich it between layers and um, that will create a really fun look for you. So let's keep moving on and let's have some fun looking at some other fun possibilities with our cardstock vellum. So let's bring in, I've got all these fun little stamped pieces here for you and um, just playing around with different looks and ideas. And the look that you get is gonna be sometimes determined by what you start with, whether it's a greeting, whether it's something that's open like that. Um, so let's start first with just coloring on it. There's a technique called stained glass, and that's where we're going to color from the background of our image. And you can use white embossing, you can use black embossing, gold embossing, you could stamp with black ink, and let it dry, um, but you're just gonna start to color on it and you're gonna get that really, really pretty translucent look. The only thing that you wanna be careful of is of course staying inside the lines a little bit. 
And when I find, when I'm doing stained glass as a technique, I find that I like to make sure that um, I'm using darker colors because you've got this piece of um, kind of translucent paper that you want the image to, to, to be shown through. You need it to start off a little bit darker. If I was to start with a really, really pale pink, for example, or something like that, it wouldn't showcase as well. Um, let it dry. If you want it a little bit darker, go back over it. I will tell you, unless it's a really, really big open um, image, big open squares like this, it's a little harder to do the shading like you might do on some of it. Right now, you're just going for that really pretty, pretty stained glass image look. So again, just taking that and coloring it with your markers is going to give you that look of stained glass, and that's exactly what we did here for our beautiful angel. She was embossed in gold. And then we flipped her over and colored her with petal pink and, um, oh my gosh, pretty peacock. I had to think about the colors there for just a second. So flipping it over and coloring it with your Stampin' Blends. If you don't have Stampin' Blends, you can most certainly use Stampin' Up's um, Stampin' Right markers. Use the brush tip on them. And then you can also you then use the fine bullet point tip on them to get down in your cracks and things like that. Watercolor pencils, you have to press a little bit hard if you're going to color with them. Um, but again, you can color with that as well as one way to go ahead and color them. So stained glass technique is, an, is one way to do that. Then I pull, hold on a second, I'll come back to these stamped images in a minute. So just simply using them on embossing folders. I love this look. Um, it's a look that you'll see as a go-to on many of my projects quite often. It just really, the tone on tone white is the embossing folders kind of breaking up the fibers on the vellum and it just really gives you a look that you can't get anywhere else. And it's a much softer look than white embossing on blue, white embossing on even white because they just really stand out. There's that distressed folder. Got a couple of them because I wasn't sure how I was gonna show things to you. There's our stars. See how it breaks it all up? Isn't that amazing? There is our gingerbread. Got something in my eye, guys. Sorry about that. And it's just kind of burning a little bit. Um, probably sunscreen. <laughs> we were out a little bit. The waves from our new folders. And then look at these circles that you can have some fun with. So let's take a look at these for a minute and showcase some thoughts and ideas about things that you can do with this. So I'm gonna grab a piece of paper and bring it in just for contrast. I've got my blending brushes. And again, I just keep mine in a little jar. I don't keep them anywhere fancy. I don't have one blend for every single color. I do have a decent collection of them. And I will usually write on the handle like greens, oranges, yellows, so that I know what colors I'm picking and using them for. And let's see, let's pull some blues. This is Lost Lagoon. And so you can either choose, and we're gonna do it both ways so that you can see it both ways. I'm just gonna add some color and I flipped it over in this case, okay? And we're just gonna blend some color into this just to make areas of it pop. So you can kind of see, let me hold it up against the white paper. So you can see where color has been blended into it. But now you don't have to flip it over if you don't want to. Let's do it on the front so that you can see the difference. And what happens when you do it on the front is you definitely get more color. And what I like about using the blending brushes on the front, I like using it both ways, I'm gonna be honest, okay? And I'm just tapping it off so I don't get one big blob in the beginning. And then I can just keep going over it and making it as dark as I want. But when I do it on the front, when I use the blending brushes on the front, the raised edges catch some of that ink and then kind of give you a two-toned look. So it's kind of a form of resist. And then this is dry, okay? Just as I've been working with it, it's been drying. So you can go ahead and just add some really, really beautiful shading to your projects. Um, do I have one that's distressed here? Um, so I could go ahead and add a little bit of distressing brown, things like that, to that image. So you can definitely be doing that. Of course, you can take and you can select just very specific areas to color. So let's get rid of the blue, because we're gonna work on 
something that's greens here for a minute. And we're just gonna come right in here in a very specific spot to highlight just specific images. So if there's just one or two things you want to draw attention to, you most certainly can draw attention to just one or two of those items. In addition to your blending brushes, um, here I can, you know, of course, pull just one or two little elements in. So, and I just wanna show you the difference in look on one piece. So here a very specific image was colored and then here you've got the blending brushes. The blending brushes are gonna go around the image. The blending brushes are going to color the image, if that makes sense, okay? This is another, just kind of giving you another version or idea. This is embossed. This is the beautiful new translucent flowers. So you can stamp and emboss images. Let's pull some colors back in here for a second. And grab my, yeah, my blues back. And I'm just gonna go right on the front of this. And just, it'll resist the ink in a few minutes. You'll see, I'm gonna just wipe it off here in just a second. Maybe I am. There's always one, nope. <laughs> so far I haven't forgotten anything at the table. Usually there's always one thing. And then you can come back in with a good wipe and remove that color. Let's bring in something fun here. And just add a little bit more color. Kind of just starting to... Got little flowers in there. There's a little flower in there color our bigger flower. You're just gonna give yourself beautiful, soft backgrounds. A tissue paper or a paper towel works really, really well with this to give you that beautiful, soft background to work with. So let's keep going. Let's see what else we can do with it. Some of the, based on some of the samples that I showed you. So this one is really, really fun to do. So this one is gonna showcase for you this look of the vellum right here. And it's gonna give you a justification for the new craft tips. The new craft tips have a large impressor and a small impressor. And those are the two edges that you're going to wanna to work with. You're gonna need your foam paper piercing mat. I've embossed in white and black just to show you the differences. And what you're going to do is you're gonna take the embossed side and you're gonna put it down and you're gonna work on the back in this case. In your larger areas, you can use the larger impress tool. You wanna to press gently. You wanna be able to see the vellum change colors, but you don't wanna press so hard that you're pushing all the way through to the back, okay? Um, in the smaller areas, let me just finish my berries and the large leaves. This is just such a cool thing to do, guys, with your embossed images. Um, and really making them pop and just especially a kind of when you do it with white It's such a gorgeous tone on tone look and really fancy makes it fancifies it makes it look fancy guys so And it's not once and done when you flip it over and you're like, oh, I missed a spot or I need to get in there a little tighter or closer You can most certainly do that You could actually come back in with a little bit of color over top of this too if you wanted to um, but I kind of just like it when I can create a pretty background with it. So let me do a little bit more on this one because I want it to have more of a complete look when I flip it over. And then for stems and things like that, a lot of times I'll come right down, kind of just off to the side of them, pressing along that stem so that that stem pops. At home on your work table, you would take a little time to make it extra neat. So, but let me flip it back over and hold it up to the camera. And now can you see where it was open space before? Now it's got that white color in it. And let me just do one, two leaves here on the black one and you'll see exactly, it'll really pop more just to show you how that works. It's really pretty too. White on white's my favorite. Um, black and white you're gonna see gives you a really big contrast and it's very elegant when you emboss it in gold 
and then do this technique with gold. But again, you're gonna need your, some people call them impressor tips, some people call them stylus tips, and the Stampin' Up! You Pick tool has two different tips like that. So if I hold that back up, it looks chopped. Isn't that gorgeous? It's just very elegant look. And that's what I did here. This is our eucalyptus folder. And that's how I made that really pop behind the images. I didn't add any other color. I simply just used that impressor tool. So something else, I'm always asking myself, hmm, I wonder, like what would happen if? For me, it's just paper. I'm not gonna try something like on a, a huge something really, really expensive, but on a small little square of paper, I am going to try something. This is a snowflake from our new sparkling snowflakes and this is actually a, a multi-step stamp you have the first image that you stamp and or the first image excuse me is a solid image that you stamp and then you stamp the second image over top this is going to give you shading underneath and i thought hmm i wonder what would happen if i did something like that with vellum and so we're gonna pick and choose which way we think looks best on this card so for this project I stamped the silver on the front. Then I stamped two different snowflakes on the back. The first one, so I stamped the first large snowflake in white. I matched this one behind it just a hair off, just enough to give a shadow. And then in between the openings of the snowflakes, flaky parts, I don't know what they call them, stems, I don't know what a snowflake different edges of it are. I stamped a little smaller one just to kind of help that snowflake pop a little bit. So it's actually embossed on both sides. So Stampin' Up! has quite a few multi stamps like that that you could do. Or you may try an image, um, a greeting on the front, and then on the back, use one of the label stamps, the stamps that are kind of oval or square or something like that to create a second image. So that's kind of giving you another idea. And then just to show you two options, I haven't decided which way I'll finish it yet. You're gonna have to come back. So here we're using some of the Old Holy Night paper and it's got beautiful stars on it. And then the, the white, if you can hold it up, shows behind that so it's not just a silver snowflake. And then on this one, I have some of our beautiful metallic snowflake paper and holographic paper. And again, just a whole different look. One of the greetings in that snowflake set is make the season sparkle. And that's where the inspiration came from for this right here. So I'm thinking I'm gonna go with this one right here because it really does sparkle even more and we'll put an iridescent rhinestone. And also I find that putting it against the holographic, you can kind of see that extra layer of white in the snowflake. So um, doubling it up. So ask yourself, it's not a hard thing um, to do. It can be a scary thing to do because a lot of times we don't trust ourselves. We don't feel crafty. We don't feel creative, but learn to ask yourself, hmm, I wonder what happened, what would happen if, you know, if I, st if I stamped both sides, if I, if I used vellum on both sides, stamped one image on the front and then added a layered image behind it. So what would happen? And I think in this case, magic happens. So I'm really excited about that. So then something else that vellum is really good for, and I don't have a finished one for you. I've got some I'm working on for an upcoming class, but it's creating luminaries. A luminary, you'll see a lot on sidewalks, on mantles and things like that. You're simply gonna create an opening and you're gonna wanna adhere that vellum into that opening. And then battery operated tea light or some other kind of little tea lights, you can, put down inside of there, and then you're gonna get that happy glow through the box. Perfect for Halloween, perfect for the Oh Holy Night, but it's absolutely wonderful for using as luminary. So if you want something to glow, you can definitely do that. And not just boxes, you could easily make this a little thicker and make it on a banner so that it hangs and kind of make a spooky little banner. And then when season's over, just take your little lights out of there and repurpose them and use them in other ways as well. A really cool light, and I just thought of this. I wish I had brought them to the table. I'm gonna do a whole video on them for you. Another type of light, I like to use fairy lights and battery operated tea lights, but do yourself a favor, make a note of this and then go to Google. There's something called balloon, like the balloon, the kind you put helium in or you blow into and blow them up. 
balloon lights. And they're about this big, and they go up into a balloon to make balloons glow. Well, they're perfect for some of those smaller type projects. You know, if you wanted to do kind of a thick layer that's held together with dimensionals, um, better off foam tape so that the little light doesn't fall through. It's really good for stuff like that. So we've gotten so much better at just really cool, like little light up disc and things like that, that really work for helping things glow, guys. So then let's just look at another idea here. And then I've got one last one I'll finish up with. So in this case, I have some elements from our beautiful, um, I think it's the Joy of Christmas bundle, the Joy of Christmas suite. And I die cut some of the leaves and things like that out of vellum. And here's a little bonus tip for you. When you're doing this technique, go ahead and get like a half a sheet of cardstock, a neutral base, and just keep that handy and do this technique on that neutral base. So let's go back to our greens here for just a second. And where's my little greeny brush? And I'm just going to add color right to this vellum from the front. Again, I'm gonna tap it off just a little bit and I'm just gonna come in and add color. Just add a little bit more here on these little leaves. And let's bring our red back in because we're doing a holiday card. My red handy. We're going to kind of tap over those berries. We can tap over the berries here. Let's see what other color do I have here at the table. Um, yeah, let's just do Misty Moonlight. It's a pretty Christmas color. It'll work with these guys. We'll grab our Misty Moonlight. And I'm just going kind of around the edges of my, because I'm going to put a greeting on this one. So I'm just kind of going around the edges of it, picking up some blue, but also just to show you something. So as I'm working, I'm going to be ending with a stencil. And depending on how you do your card, and if you're kind of like realizing that that's happening as you do it, first off, you're going to have this beautiful elements to use on a card because they're all sponged and beautiful. And that is, where's the really pretty one? That's exactly how this card is done. These are your paper flowers um, from the paper florist dies. And they were just laid on cardstock and sponged in different colors. But the cardstock that they were sponged onto, where's the bonus card that has nothing to do with this? Here's the leftover piece. So just a whole lot of fun using that reverse negative. Nothing goes to waste in my studio. I'm always repurposing but taking your vellum die cuts. Now the trick to that is you've just got to really kind of hold on to it with your finger because you know, you're pushing on it a little bit with that brush. And so, you know, as you're kind of coloring it, it is going to want to pick up. So you're going to kind of push down a little bit. You can come back in and kind of soften your stencil if you want to, but you're definitely going to be able to do some really pretty things by taking a little bit of color right to that. When you think about all of the beautiful leaf pieces that we have and flowers and things that can be cut out, that's just going to add, when I put that on a card, that's just going to have a whole nother really, really pretty look. Pick some colors that kind of complement and balance the designer paper and you're off and running, but that's going to be a really pretty one. In this case, I'm going to put the greeting a little bit smaller because I like the fact that the blue looks watercolored this way. Okay. So we've got, I thought I had one more thing laying here for you. Hold on. No, I, oh yeah, I do. Hold on. So this was a card that I showcased for you in the handcrafted elements video. And I told you to come back today and I would show you how I made that card because it, the finished wise looks so cool. So the dies in the handcrafted ornament set, you've got your ornament, you've got two different ovals with designs and flowers and things like or like tags and stars and things like that. So what I used is I've got black cardstock. I used the same die to cut an oval in here. 
and I have some vellum. So the very first thing that I'm going to do is take my adhesive and I'm just gonna kind of go around the oval. That's the only part I'm really kind of worried about for right now. And I can trim all this up later. It's gonna be trimmed down to go to a card front. So I can, I'm not worried about the edges hanging off or anything like that. So I have this look here. Now I want to put this into this opening. I'm gonna go back to this technique of a little bit of adhesive um, on the piece here. And my dauber's gone missing, but that's okay. We are all set and covered with that. So when I'm working, I treat really, really fine detailed dyes the same way I do vellum. I use a, I use a dauber and I just tap that adhesive. The reason being is I don't want anything squishing out. I don't want any blobs showing up on my um, vellum or anything like that. So I'm just gonna tap all that on and I'll put that aside. I can peel the, after the glue dries, I can peel it right off of that silicone sheet. I'm gonna press that in. So we've got that piece pushed in there. And then I can just take my blends. And I like to work with blends simply because they dry so much quicker. Um, but I could, again, as I mentioned, use pencils, use markers. Um, and again, you wanna start with the darker. I always like to start with the dark as opposed to the light blend. So this is dark daffodil. And we have dark real red. I'll tell you the most quiet I ever see a group of crafters is if they're all coloring at the same time. It goes like radio silence. It's absolutely adorable. I love it. So if you're ever trying to get a, a group of people, whether it's adults or kids, or especially crafters quiet, have them all start coloring at the same time. And if I flip this over, you're gonna have, truly with the black around it, something that looks like stained glass. And it's just such a really pretty look. So that's with black. But again, does it have to be black? Yes, stained glass has black leading around it. I understand that. And um, that makes sense. But I could also do white in there too and do a beautiful white on white on white, which would be stunning for a first communion, stunning for a wedding. So this is more traditional stained glass because of the black leading. But again, of course, you could do gold. You could do something else. And in this case, this was done on a card front and it opens all the way because from the back, it doesn't look bad. I don't feel the need to hide that. And I can just open the whole card front and you can see through to the back. So just as a quick reminder, depending on where you popped in, I've got this crazy old mess and this is Vellum 1.0. I have about seven more techniques for Vellum 2.0, um, but let's just kind of review for you. Using your blending brushes on your dies, okay? Die cut them and blend away. As a little extra bonus, keep that sheet under it so that then you can use the reverse, kind of use them like stencils. So that's kind of a little extra bonus for you. So that's one way. The other way is to color on the back as we did here, creating that stained glass look. Here it's with gold, more traditional is with black. We used our small and large impressor tips on di uh, stamped images, or in this case, this was an embossing folder image, so we could use it either way, to press that, um, add more pressing to th the embossing folder. Just simply using it direct to your paper, adding that pretty little touch of your vellum, using it as layers. So here, just a softer layer, it's actually even behind the sunflower a little bit too, but it just adds a softness as opposed to having a white layer over the top. We talked about coloring behind your vellum. Using that vellum to break up your layers, but it's a thinner layer, doesn't add a whole lot of extra weight, and it's not a visual layer, it's not a real thick, it's very subtle, and it's just a nice way to do that. Um, using it as a backdrop to make your images pop, and again, it would pop differently if I had used white or vanilla. So this is a more subtle, more draw your attention to it. 
using your vellum on images that have windows um, so that you want to, you know, have that look of a window. So <laughs> the vellum makes it look a little steamed up. I guess maybe it's a little warm in that gondola going up. And then again, those windows sandwiching it between cardstock, just a subtle, subtle look. So lots and lots of fun with vellum, guys. If you have questions about any of the product that I used, any of the different ways that we colored, um, any of the different ways that we adhered that vellum, um, pop them in below. And if you have something fun that you like to do with vellum, I always love learning from fellow crafters. Pop that in below too and tell me about your technique for using vellum. Oh, and we almost forgot, of course, creating our um, luminaries. And right now we have an amazing box die, which is perfect for creating luminaries at the moment and helping things share. So have some fun creating guys, plenty of stuff on your shelf. Um, the holiday catalog products are obviously going to be absolutely fun with vellum, especially all of these beautiful new folders that are coming your way. But I guarantee that a lot of you have amazing products on your shelf right now in your crafting stash to start giving some of these um, ideas a try. Thanks guys, have an amazing, remarkable weekend.